Isaac's Laugh by Juan Ignacio Pena. Isaac thought he had the best grandpa in the world because he made up stories that helped him to forget about the illness that was stealing all of his curly blonde hair. His favorite story was Nuba because it was about a little boy who was a king of the land of laughter where everyone told the funniest jokes. But the little boy king had a deadly enemy, the Lord of Noise, who hated happy creatures and was always making a terrible ruckus. He was determined to be, do away with laughter. Isaac daydreamed about the kingdom of Nuba, especially when he was in the hospital. He loved the amazing stories his grandpa told him. Without realizing it, he smiled all the time. On the morning of his birthday, Isaac woke up with a start. He was wearing his musketeer costume and floating in the clouds alongside a little man with red hair. Who are you? Isaac asked. My name is Cam, and I'm not a bird. I'm not an angel, and I don't run on batteries. Isaac laughed. You're very strange. Last night, I dreamed about a green creature with a yellow hat and a mouth like a piece of watermelon, who was laughing and laughing, but it wasn't you. Look behind you, said the little man. Isaac turned around and came face to face with the enormous smile of a round, green creature wearing a yellow hat. It's my dream, he cried happily, and his name is Gus. Yes, Gus, hissed the creature. Gus was a funny dream, and he had been created thanks to Isaac. I want you to meet the king of Nuba, said Cam. I'm in Nuba? Isaac couldn't believe it. They landed in the Palace of Laughter, where nothing was in the right place. The little boy king lay on a bed in the middle of a patio full of furniture. He was breathing with difficulty and groaning ever so quietly. What's wrong with him? asked Isaac. They've stolen his laugh, so he's very sick. Will you help us to return the king's laugh? said Cam. Of course I will, said Isaac. He was always ready to help others, especially when he was wearing his musketeer costume with its red hat and enormous goose feather. Isaac was so excited. He walked up the bed to the bed. Hello, your majesty. I'm sorry you're not feeling very well. Would you like me to tell you a joke? But right then, a group of children ran into the patio playing with a ball. They were part of the remedy to cure the king. Ball! yelled Gus. Gus leaped on the ball and began to kick it furiously. Pieces of furniture and painting flew through the air. The children yelled and screamed in excitement. In an instant, everything had become an absolute shambles. Isaac was surprised by the way Gus was behaving. When he looked over at the king, he saw that his majesty was smiling and the expression of happiness had returned to his eyes. How can we get back the king's smile? asked Isaac with a firm tone in his voice. Do we have to fight the Lord of Noise? We may, but first we have to get back the king's smile. It was stolen by the knight, said Cam. Isaac raised his musketeer sword and yelled, For the king and his smile! The others repeated his words. Isaac saw life as a wonderful game, and now it was time to play at getting the king's smile back. Gus laughed and burped merrily. He had a tremendous, brave, and caring creature, the perfect companion for an adventure. Laughing, they left the palace in search of the knight. 
Far away, the Lord of Noise was making terrible noises using black magic and sealing them up in bottles. Each bottle had a label. There was a noise to make children cry, another to strike fear into the hearts of the brave, a noise to drive away happiness, and a noise that would keep you from hearing anyone else. He wanted to hurl all of that din at Isaac and destroy Nuba's laughter forever. Isaac and his friends walked and walked until they reached the frontiers of Nuba. There, in the deepest, darkest place, was a knight, young, beautiful, and smelling of jasmine. But she had a very sad face. Isaac liked her because she reminded him of his garden. A long time ago, I was very happy. Whispered the knight, but now I feel so alone. I stole the king's smile so I could be happy again, but it didn't work. Maybe your smile could help me. My smile is no better than the king's. I don't think other people's smile can bring back your happiness. And why do you think that? Said the knight. You can't be happy stealing other people's smiles. You must have your own wonderful dreams that make you smile. Don't feel lonely. Thanks to you, we can sleep and dream. The knight closed her eyes, and a tear rolled down her cheek until it turned into a star, which she placed on Isaac's forehead. This star contains a stolen smile, she said. Isaac hugged the knight, not realizing he was the first person to ever do so. The knight smiled. Now her face was not so sad. While Isaac talked to her, a huge shadow spread over the royal palace. The Lord of Noise was preparing to attack. The dark army let out a terrifying howl. The battle had begun. Isaac ran to the battlefield with Cam and Gus. Their laughter could hardly be heard with all the noise, and then the battle suddenly came to a halt, and silence fell. The star on Isaac's forehead shone brightly, and the two armies saw his happy face. The people of Nuba cheered in delight, and hope returned to their hearts. Isaac had faced up to the Nord, Lord of Noise and the kingdom's most joyous laughter. The star on his forehead lit up the night, and a shower of light swept over the em- enemy's rank, transforming the noise into laughter. And the horrible monsters into funny creatures. In desperation, the Lord of Noise began to laugh, and discovered that all of his hate had disappeared. He finally understood that happiness was much better than any other feeling. Laughter had trumped. Suddenly, as Isaac felt very tired, he knew it was time for him to head home. He lay down on the grass and gradually disappeared as he said goodbye to his friends with a sweet smile. That night, all the inhabitants of Nuba, great and small, hairy and rocky, with feathers of squales, all dreamed about Isaac. And something wonderful happened: a new star began to shine in the sky, a tiny star, but brighter than any of the others. They all knew that it was Isaac's star, and that it would always be there, smiling down at them. Isaac was now part of a sky full of brave, funny hearts whose smiles showered the earth with happiness and endless love.